Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, let's get more now on our top story, as the former double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia are both in intensive care after falling unconscious in Salisbury City Centre on Sunday. An investigative report by the BuzzFeed news site last year uncovered 14 gruesome deaths that US spy agencies have linked to Russia. Let's take a look at some of those cases now. Well, perhaps the most high profile was back in November 2006 when Alexander Litvinenko was killed by radioactive polonium, believed to have been put in a cup of tea. The UK public inquiry into his death concluded that there was a strong possibility his murder was ordered by Vladimir Putin. A couple of years later, 2008, the exiled Georgian billionaire Badri Patakash Tishvili was found dead in his mansion in Surrey. The Russian whistleblower Alexander Peripelechny collapsed near his home, also in Surrey, in 2012. A court heard he could have been poisoned, but key evidence about his last meal was flushed away hours after his death. Boris Berezhovsky, who was a close ally of Pata Kash Tishvili, the two oligarchs had built up a vast business empire in Russia in the post-communist era. He was found hanged at his home in Ascot in 2013. And then there was Scott Young, the 52-year-old property tycoon, died when he fell from a fifth-floor window in Marylebone onto railings in December 2014. Well, joining me now from our studio in central London is the investigations editor for BuzzFeed, Heidi Blake, who co-wrote the report from Russia with blood. Heidi, um, why do you believe all of these cases are linked? What's the evidence? Well, uh, my team and I at BuzzFeed News uncovered overwhelming evidence in all these 14 cases connecting these suspicious deaths to either the Russian state or mafia groups. Um, in the case of Berezovsky, we found that he and eight other people in his immediate circle of close associates had died in suspicious circumstances after he and Badri Patakatsishvili fled from Russia and expatriated millions of pounds worth of, of Russian wealth. Scott Young, the man who fell from his window and was impaled on railings in 2014, was a British fixer who had worked with Berezovsky and Pazakatsishvili to move their money out of Russia. And he and several other British lawyers and business associates also died in gruesome circumstances after becoming involved in their affairs. We know that Berezovsky and Pazakatsishvili were the targets of multiple assassination attempts before they finally died on British soil. Um, and separately from that group of men, there are another five cases where we can see that there is there's evidence connecting these deaths to Russia. You mentioned one of them, Alexander Peripolichny. He was found to have traces of deadly plant poison in his stomach after he dropped dead following, uh, following his decision to come to the UK and blow the whistle on Russian money laundering. And there are a number of other cases like that where people have died in highly suspicious circumstances. But every single case until now has been treated as non-suspicious by the British police. Why do you believe that that is happening? Why is, in your view, the British police not following these up correctly? Well, we spoke to, uh, to many security and intelligence sources in both the US and the UK, some very senior serving high ranking officials um, who told us that the British government has been loath to take a firm line with the Kremlin over the past decade. Um, another case you mentioned was that of Alexander Litvinenko, who was famously poisoned in London by two uh, Russian Secret Service assassins. The British government did accuse the Kremlin of orchestrating that assassination, and that caused 10 years of intense diplomatic pain for Britain, um, an absolute freeze on diplomatic relations with Moscow. And the British economy has become increasingly reliant on investment. We have billions of pounds worth of Russian money pouring into British banks and properties. But we also understand that the, the government is concerned about growing Russian cyber capabilities and Russia's growing military might and therefore has been has been timid about standing up to Russia in in many of these cases the fact that the police have come out yesterday and made a public statement about the death of Sergei Skripal seems to indicate a bit of a step change and it would appear from what our sources are telling us that the government is actually now facing the fact that it needs to take a firm stance when we can see evidence of what looks like another attempted Russian assassination in Britain. And that was actually going to be my next question to you, Heidi, because, we, as you say, we, we've seen a police statement very quickly, counter-terrorism police taking over very quickly, Boris Johnson in the Commons very quickly. Do you think that this is, is the final one that, that the British government is going to take? It would seem lying down. 
I think this this is a big step change. I mean, we we could see from our reporting last year that there was growing pressure on the British government and British intelligence agencies to take seriously the threat of Russian assassinations in Britain. Um, the senior serving US intelligence sources we spoke to were very angry about Britain's failure to take a firm line. Um, and they spoke out in our reports, and I think that that has resonated. I think also growing concerns about Russia's interference in Western democracies has contributed to, to you know, heightening concern about, about this threat. And so it's good to see this being taken seriously. It does seem that a tipping point has been reached. It's good to see growing pressure across the the political spectrum for a full inquiry into not just this attempted assassination, but the 14 other cases we've identified, which as yet have not been properly investigated. Do you think that these investigations should be reopened? Yes, I think that there needs to be a full investigation into all 14 cases and what may be necessary is a public inquiry um, because the, in, in, the, in the Litvinenko investigation it was impossible for any other sort of inquiry to hear intelligence material in private. A public inquiry led by um, a security cleared judge would be able to take evidence from MI5 and MI6 and review classified intelligence material that we know has been passed to the British government by US spy agencies as well and then form a conclusion about the likelihood of Russian involvement in these deaths. So it's good to see there's, we've, there's been calls today in the House of Commons for a full investigation, um, and we'd certainly like to see these cases reopened and looked at properly. There are those uh, who say they don't need to be, including um, Alexander Perry Pellicini's wife, Tatiana, who says that she thinks his death is being used to promote a campaign against Russia. Could this not potentially be the case? I think the evidence in, in, in the cases that we've looked at is so overwhelming, I think it's not credible to suggest that this is just a campaign to smear Russia. Um, I mean, quite the contrary, these are cases where there is overwhelming evidence of, of Russian involvement in, in many of these deaths and there's been nothing done about it by the British authorities. I think it's understandably very difficult for the families of some of the people involved um, to speak out. People are, are understandably scared for their own lives. Um, that may or may not be the case with Tatiana Peripolichny. I'm, I'm aware that that is her position. Uh, but in many of the other cases we've identified, there are family members who are crying out for an investigation into the deaths of their, their loved ones and, and still looking for answers years after their deaths. And I know that they would welcome a full inquiry. Heidi Blake, thanks very much. Heidi Blake there from BuzzFeed who uncovered a lot of these stories. Thank you. I've been